mind a light-hearted trip through the contents of my head and the world in general it is wednesday the 8th of january my name is owen and here is what is on my mind today so once again a very early morning video so i'm keeping my voice a little quiet as it might be i do apologize you might have to turn your volume up a little bit and again the green screen is going to be as good as i can get it but it's not great because the light is not great anyway as usual i have picked out five stories making the headlines today i want to give my thoughts on links will be in the descriptions below so you can read each article in full and show those original publications some love so without any further ado, let's get into it. Story number one. So story number one today comes from BuzzFeed News. This woman accidentally made ball sack cookies. You see, this is where you come for the real news. None of this Iran stuff. You don't need to know about that. This is what the fun stuff is. This is the distraction from that because Lord knows we need one. So yes, this is uh, Emma Plummer, and she is a self-taught baker in Tucson, Arizona, who specializes in macaroons, and usually her creations are pretty stunning. But recently things went terribly and hilariously awry. Uh, she decides to try and make heart-shaped macaroons in preparation for Valentine's Day. Her first attempt did not go as planned. I had my batter and I was following the template, but I really didn't know what I was doing, she said. I was like, wow, these are not looking great. But she <laughs> baked them anyway, and they came out, the results were clear. She had definitely made perfect little ball sacks. Look at those beauties. <laughs> I mean, you can see the template, she was going for the heart. Um, but yeah, that's what we got. Little, little, a uh, nice line of sacks for you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she said uh, they were just heart-shaped fails. Um, they got worse than the oven because their shape altered and the pink colouring faded to the perfect um, shade of flesh. Um, she said she was laughing hysterically and sent them out to a family group chat and everyone was dying over them. She also shared the photo on Twitter, which quickly went viral with people putting puns up like saccharoons and various things. And it inspired other people to put their baking fails. So you got um, phallic looking croissants and things. So everyone's kind of taken it in really good spirit. Um, she has had a she had her notifications turned off, so she did notice the tweet gone viral until a day later. Uh, one of the people I was a follower responded to it, and opened it, and noticed there was a ton of likes and retweets. She said it was crazy. Uh, she also posted on a business's Instagram story. Was surprised to see cookies getting a warm reception. People suggested that she makes them again for like bachelorette parties or post for as a post for sake to be gift. Yes, um, there you go. Have some. Ball sack cookies. Uh, keep an eye out for the dirty macarons being added to her offerings. Uh, I didn't think they would go over as well as they did, she said. As for the batch, she's planning to finish them in buttercream and share them with some friends coming over to watch the batch with. So there you go, happy ending, but we've all had baking fails and we've all done something. We've all come with, maybe not to that degree, but we've all, you know, with the best will in the world, tried to make something and it's not quite gone as planned, but usually not to this degree, so yeah just a nice story just a kind of a palate cleanser for everything that's going on in the, the serious news today so anyway let's move on a slightly more serious story but uh, this is from cnbc uh canadian doctors warn marijuana edibles pose a greater risk of overdose so yeah baked goods candies and other cannabis infused edibles may not be as safe as people think especially for first-time users children and the elderly according to a new paper published in a peer-reviewed canadian medical association journal so the psychoactive effects can take up to four hours to fully kick in since it takes longer for the body to absorb edibles than other forms of marijuana. Uh, some people may more than intended as a result, increasing the risk of overdose in the University of Toronto Public Health Re researchers Dr. Jeseline Grewal and Lawrence Lowe wrote in a commentary piece published on Monday. Although edibles are commonly viewed as a safer and more desirable alternative to smoked or vaped cannabis, physicians and the public should be aware of several risks related to the use of cannabis edibles. Greywall and Lowe wrote, It is difficult to die from overdosing marijuana, according to the Center for, for Disease Control, but an overdose can cause extreme confusion, anxiety, paranoia, hallucinations, and vomiting. Uh, the effects of smoking pot or eating an edible can last longer than alcohol, with a high from marijuana lasting up to eight hours. The researchers have said they also warn that the same dosage of cannabis can cause different responses in different people and edibles can be especially risky for children because their metabolism operates differently from adults. Um, after Colorado legalized consumption of edibles, the state's poison control said it saw a 70% increase in calls for accidental cannabis exposure um, in children from 2013 to 2017, the researchers said. Studies of healthcare usage also reported more children and adults being treated for ingestion incidents. 
This is the elderly are not excluded from risk. Among older adults, cannabis consumption, including the use of edibles, has been linked to greater cognitive impairment and a heightened risk of hypertension-related falls, arrhythmia, and drug interactions, they said. The paper comes to cannabis as Canada and 11 US states have legalised recreational use of the drug. Most recently, Canada introduced a so-called Cannabis 2.0, the legalisation of marijuana derivatives, including edibles and beverages. Canada and US regulators have included restrictions with the drug, including age limits and dosage requirements. Grable and Lowe recommended physicians routinely ask patients about cannabis use, including edibles, so they can cancel them on safer consumption and discourage the use of illicit or homemade cannabis edibles. They also continue surveillance so it also said, continuous surveillance and advocacy efforts are needed to identify and address unforeseen effects on the communities. So, yeah, nice warning there from these uh, two doctors who've studied this and what they're basically saying, I think the overall gist is that because edibles take longer to get into your system, people will have some edibles and they'll just think this isn't working. You know, maybe the dose isn't low. Maybe it has a bit more and a bit more and a bit more and then it kicks in and it hits you. And like it says, it's hard to die from it, but it can cause confusion and nausea and all kinds of other things, which can lead to other things. If you're confused and nauseated and a little bit dizzy, you could walk into traffic or something like that. And plus, if you're, because edibles are digested by the body differently from the way you would smoke a joint, for example, those with varying metabolisms will break it down at different rates. So somebody with very high metabolism might break it down very quickly and they get a big hit of it. Whereas somebody else, it might be like a slow release, the metabolism operates on it slower and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's, you know, any drug advice is, is good advice. I know people tend to view this kind of thing as it's it's doctors being killjoys, but no, it's important, important advice that it needs to be taken on board. Um, I'm not surprised about the elderly thing because it's long been studied and kind of rubber stamped that cannabis can help a lot of age related conditions. Um, so why not? But it's like any drug, it's education. Educate, let people know what they're getting into, let them know the goods and the bads. If you, what you often find with drugs is um, the US did this back in the day when they sort of clamped down really hard on steroids. They just came out and said, steroids don't work, you know, don't waste your time. But everybody knew, well, actually they do work. So therefore you're lying to us. So what else are you lying to? Are you lying to us about the risks? So an open, honest discussion and say, yeah, these are the, this is why people do it, because it does make you feel good, it does do this, it does do that. But temper that with these things. And I think if you come at people like that and give them the full facts and not just what your agenda is, people are smart, they will make the right decision. But yeah, it's good that um, this has been highlighted and hopefully things can be put in place. And, you know, like it says, when people are coming into physicians' offices, it's like, you know, do you use recreational cannabis and, you know, how do you take it and this, that and the other. And again, the thing is with edibles, you don't know how much is in it. If you have a joint and you see it rolled yourself, so you know the kind of um, percentage-wise between tobacco and cannabis or if it's pure cannabis you can kind of see the amount you can visually gauge it and if you know your tolerances whereas in an edible if it's in a gummy or a brownie or whatever it is you don't know how much that is and you don't know the consistency between one to the next so you could have one that's got very little in it and the next one could have a load in it because it takes your body so long to break it down anyway you don't feel anything after the first one you have another one and then it all hit in together so again it's just a bit of caution just be aware anyway let's move on Another drug story, this is in the mirror today, it's about as heavy as we're going to get today. Um, online sellers flog date rape drug GHB for 10 p a dose due to a legal loophole. So yeah, this is, you often hear about these things where people kind of find a way to usurp the law. So enough date rape drug GHB to render more than 200 people unconscious can be bought online for just £70, the mirror investigation has found. A loophole means that a legal cleaning product which is converted by the body into GHB when consumed can be bought online for less than 10p for a normal dose. It comes after the conviction of Britain's worst ever rapist, Reynard Sinaga, who is believed to have attacked up to 195 victims after doping them with GHB. But there are concerns that the widespread availability of the Class C drug is spawning a generation of addicts, with some young people turning to it as a healthier alternative to alcohol. 
<laughs> Mirror Investigation found a string of websites across Europe selling huge quantities of cleaning solvent GBL for around £70 a litre. That's less than 10p for a typical 1ml dose. It's legal in the UK uh, unless it is intended for consumption. We'll come back to that, it's quite an important point. Uh, one website offers a thousand mil of pharma grade industrial cleaner for less than seventy pounds. Another advertises ninety nine point nine percent purity and boasts all of the products are consistently in stock, one day delivery to Europe. It is believed the drug is bought in large quantities by dealers in the UK who then replace it, repackage it in smaller doses using refillable capsules, plastic heat seal straws, or even the type of small fish shaped soy bottles used in the sushi bar, which is what you saw in the, in the header there. Uh, these are then distributed at pubs and clubs and through apps like the gay dating site Grinder where users advertise G1 mil for as little as a pound. Users typically take just one to two mil at a time, but the drug is so potent that an extra mil can lead to a loss of consciousness and even death. As it's colourless, odourless and tasteless, it's become one of the most widely used date rape drugs. It is particularly dangerous when combined with alcohol, and as many of Sanaga's victims have been drinking before he targeted them, experts told the mirror it was remarkable, but none appear to have died. Increasing numbers of addicts of drugs like GHB led to the creation of the Club Drug Clinic by the Central and Northwest London NHS Foundation Trust. Becky Harris, services manager at the Club Drug Clinic, it's hard to say, said predominantly our clients are people who have used GHB for chemsex, uh, gay men who choose to use it in a sexual context. We also do have some heterosexual women who use it. People might start off using it recreationally, but you can quickly become physically addicted and you can buy it very easily. It is very difficult and dangerous. It's very difficult and dangerous to dose. You can be completely out, but you can come around very quickly. You can be in a hazy state, or you can fatally overdose very easily too. It is particularly dangerous with alcohol, as it works in the same system. It is amazing that this man was able to administer doses to people who were already drunk and that they survived. Uh, Peter Sheath, Chemsex Mental Health Lead at the Adaction Liverpool, said typically people take the drug recreationally through mixing droplets of the liquid in a drink. People will often use a pipette to measure the dosage. The chance of overdose when taking GHB are extremely high and there's just a few millimetres difference between having a good time and going under. Going under describes the practice of losing consciousness, a common occurrence when taking GHB, hence why people use it as a daily drug. This obviously leaves people vulnerable to exploitation. In extreme cases, overdosing can lead to people entering a coma and can be fatal. There is a growing trend of young people using GHB as a club drug and will often mix it in alcoholic or soft drinks to achieve a sense of relaxation and euphoria. Uh, GHB was made a Class C drug in 2003, but GBL remains legal as a cleaning product, but since 2009 it has been illegal to sell it in the UK, supply, import, export or produce, if knowing or believing that it will be used for the purpose of human ingestion. Um, during the last 10 years there have been 265 deaths in England and Wales linked to GHB according to the Office of National Statistics, but this figure may be higher as it is not routinely tested for after sudden deaths which can be difficult to detect. Um, Possessing GHB or GBL can be punished with a two-year prison sentence and an unlimited fine, which supplying either can result in up to 14 years in jail. So yeah, that, I mean, that ruling just seems, the wording of that, um, it is um, illegal to sell in the UK if you knowing or believing that it will be used for the purpose of human ingestion. So how do you, how do you then prosecute somebody how can you prove to somebody if somebody if you're selling it in like you know one mil bottles it's clear that that is not going to be used for cleaning unless you're cleaning something teeny tiny you know it's ridiculous but these companies aren't doing that they're selling vats of it they're selling it liters so you know a liter bottle is like you get a liter bottle of bleach or something so it says a cleaning product it doesn't say specifically what it's cleaned for but you'd imagine a, a litre bottle of something is kind of appropriate size for a cleaning product. So that is how they're getting around this law. I mean, for me, unless it's unless it has unless this GBL serves a very specific cleaning function which cannot be done by anything else, it should be just ban it. There is a million different cleaning products made up of different chemical compositions that can be used to clean things successfully. If this thing can be used for this purpose. And it's not essential for what its actual purpose is. In other words, it's another product can do the job just as well. Just ban the import of it completely. Because this rule about, well, you can't, it's illegal if you know it's for human consumption. You know, but again, these manufacturers are well aware. Some of them will be well aware that that's what it's for. 
but they know it's going to be very difficult to pre to prosecute that. So I don't know. Again, I don't want to dwell too much on this one. It's more a warning than anything else. You know, this stuff is again, it's it's the dosage of it. You know, one to two mil, you have a good time. Maybe any more than that, and you know, it could kill you. And again, just be aware of it. Odorless, colourless, and tasteless. You know, it's it's an old message, but it, it always bears repeating. If you're out on a night out with a group of friends, protect yourself, watch your drinks, that kind of thing, and just, you know, stay with friends. Do not go off with strangers. You're not a hundred thousand percent sure I've got best intentions for your well being. So anyway, hopefully off the back of an investigation like this, maybe something will be done. Let's hope it is because yeah. Anyway, let's move on to some light affair for story number four. Story number four. This is Associated Press via MSN News. Florida police respond after a parrot cries, let me out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Lake Worth Beach. From someone in Florida a neighborhood, uh, someone in a Florida neighborhood heard chilling cries and the words, let me out, they dialed 911. Little did they know the cries of that from a 40-year-old parrot named Rambo. After the call, four palm beef, fully, palm beef. Oh, I'm going to need a drink, I'm sorry. Let's try again. It is early. Give me a break. After the call, four Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputies pulled up and questioned a man who appeared to be repairing a car in his driveway. Uh, the Palm Beach Post reports that when the deputies explained their concerns, the man smiled, then told the deputies he introduced them to the perpetrator. When he returned with the parrot, the deputies burst out laughing. The man told officers he taught Rambo to scream, let me out, when he was a kid and Rambo lived in a cage. Um, PBSO officials said could not be reached for more details. The agency did tweet a link to the video Saturday saying our deputies in Lake Worth Beach came to the help of someone screaming for help. Hilarity ensued. So, yeah, just like a nice light story. Um, why not in this day and age? Let's have a little bit of fun. So, yeah, he taught his parrot, he basically taught his parrot to troll people. So it was in its cage and when anybody came in, it would scream, let me out, let me out. Um, and parrots have got an incredible ability to mimic human speech so yeah and it was so convincing that somebody heard it and thought oh that must be somebody trapped inside called did the responsible thing called the police and it turned out to be rambo the parrot so good story in the sense that nobody was actually begging to be let out it was just the parrot you could argue you know i'm sure the police have other things to do but you know it was just a, a light-hearted moment and the police took it in good spirit and you know put it off on their on their twitter so yeah why not Excellent. Let's move on. Last story of the day. Last story of the day. Metro. Man wakes up to find a burglar sucking his toes. This is creepy as hell. So a man has been traumatised after waking up in the middle of the night to find a burglar sucking his toes. The victim, 20, told the intruder they didn't have any money, but the man responded that he didn't want cash, he just wanted to suck toes, according to a police report. They began to fight with the suspect claiming he would pull a gun from his pants by grabbing his genitals as if to do so. Thankfully, he didn't pull out a gun and the victim managed to push him outside. After leaving, the man smashed the victim's car windscreen and then fled. Uh, Brandonton Herald reported. Uh, police were called to the scene in Bradenton, Bradenton, Florida, on Christmas Eve, and brought dogs to the home, to, um, into the home for tracking down the foot fetishist. However, no arrests have yet been made. They took swabs of DNA from between the victim's toes to try and find him, but have not yet come up with any matches in a database, and no similar cases have been reported. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I've put this up, you can have a bit of a laugh, but imagine if you were that person, you woke up and you're like, you know, just like, that's weird, I don't have a dog. And then you look down and there's some guy <laughs> with his mouth around your toes. And you're like, I haven't got any money. like, I don't want your money. I'm just here to suck toes. How creepy is that? Anyway, the guy, they struggled. He threw him out the window. And then there's like a, a consolation, you know, kick in the, in the bits. He smashed the guy's windscreen as if to say, how dare you throw me out of your house? All I was doing was sucking your feet. Anyway. So they've taken DNA swabs from the guy's toes and hopefully they'll find out who did this. But I mean, had this guy done it? So it's a 20 year old victim. You know, I mean, that could be, depending on your character, that could be traumatic. Anybody, whenever you have, I mean, I've spoken about this before when I had my car stolen, like you feel violated. It's just an object, but it's like somebody was in it, somebody took it. This guy is in somebody's house. It's like, you know, just. Aside from the kind of 
aspects I'm trying to make funny out of this. You know, this 20 year old guy could be like, you know, somebody got into my house. What if he'd had a knife? What if he'd had a gun? What if he hadn't come in with the intention of just, you know, sucking my toes? So that's a really weird line to say. So hopefully he's okay about it. Um, you know, it's in Florida, so it's, you know, it doesn't say if the guy broke in, just that the guy was in, so it's Florida's a hot state, maybe a window open, you know, just to air the room out, and this guy managed to creep in. But he woke up, no harm done, apart from his car windscreen, and the police are now looking for this gentleman. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what you can do, wear socks. But yeah, a weird, a weird story. Um, Initially, I found it quite funny, so I thought, yeah, we'll talk about it. But then you kind of look on it, reflect, and like, God, this guy, this kid could be traumatized like that. And just because there was a somebody in his house and that close to him, close enough to do anything to him, if you're close enough to do something that intimate, it's close enough to stab him or strangle him or drug him or whatever. So, yeah, it could be traumatic. So, hopefully, he's okay with it, or he's going to be okay with it going forward, isn't he? This was either an isolated incident or they're going to catch whoever it was. Anyway, so that's it, guys. That is it for today. Links to all the stories I've come discussed. Can be found links. I can't speak again. This is just water. I have some reason. Maybe just give me a minute to compose myself, but I'm always better after a sip. Anyway, links to all the stories I've discussed today can be found in the description below, so feel free to go and check them out. Let me know what you think about this video and tell me what's your most disastrous baking fail. So not necessarily hilarious, but what did you do that just went downhill fast? Anyway, answers in the comments, please, on with any thoughts you'd like to share. These were mine. They're not necessarily important. They're not necessarily right or wrong. They're just what was on my mind. So until next time, bye for now.